Warning, regardless of what spell check might lead you to believe, we are not talking about ducks. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by My Sheets Rock, Hello Fresh, Adam and Eve, and by Microphones and Shit. And now, The Scathing Atheist. G'day, I'm Brett, and I'm a primary school principal in a public school in New South Wales, Australia. And despite what the volunteers who present to our 5 to 12 year old children in the special religious education lessons that are government mandated, parted every week in our school, we did in fact evolve from filthy monkey men and women. In fact, the politicians who made the special religious education compulsory are proof that not all of us have evolved as far as others. It's May 19th. And it's World Inflammatory Bowel Diseases Day. Wow, and we still made you work? That's crazy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. you <laughs> I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. Um, he's Enright. And from Count Basie's, New Jersey, oh, Ann Arbor, Michigan, and Waycross, Georgia, this is The Skating Atheist. On this week's episode, a mass shooter gets his massive ass inspired by mass. Christian moms give up sweet tea and Netflix just like Gandhi. <laughs> And Greg Locke will face fewer consequences for violating the IRS's rules than he did for violating Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> but first, the diatribe. Don't get me wrong. I would love to talk about politics less on this show, too. I'd love it if the animating force behind everything wrong with American politics didn't flow through religion. I'd love it if the tiny fraction of us who are willing to admit that there's no cosmic Disneyland awaiting us upon our death weren't the only goddamn bulwark between us and Christian fascism. But that's not the world we live in. So I'm going to talk about Tuesday's primary results. See, the media at large is basically presenting this round of primaries as a referendum on Trumpism and his election conspiracy bullshit. And while that is a fair framing, I fear that it understates the hell out of the problem. Because, look, Trump is a 75-year-old overweight couch potato that lives on a diet of fast food burgers, burned steaks, and statins. As bad as he is, he's not going to be around a hell of a lot longer. And by personifying the problem in him... All too many pundits are giving us the false sense of hope that all we have to do is outlive Trump and the problem will start to fade. Yes, the things that he did will reverberate for a much longer time, most notably his Supreme Court picks. But as this theory holds, once he's gone, democracy can start to heal itself. But this ignores the real problem. It didn't start with Trump and it's not going to end with him. The real problem, as regular listeners are all too aware, is radical Christianity. It's shit like the seven mountains theology, which says that Christians have a divine obligation to take over the seven mountains of public life. Those being religion, family, education, government, the arts and business. It's the toxic blend of religion and politics that's gobbling up school boards, police departments and municipal governments. It's the regressive, racist, homophobic, misogynistic movement that demands exceptions to contraception mandates and anti-discrimination laws. So the right framing of this isn't mainstream candidates versus Trump endorsed candidates. It's mainstream authoritarian theocrats versus the motherfuckers so theocratically authoritarian they scare the mainstream ones. Let me give you a prime example out of Pennsylvania. Now, many of you won't be familiar with the name Doug Mastriano. And to be honest, I am jealous of you. Mastriano earned Trump's endorsement in his campaign for Pennsylvania governor by doing everything but suck at his toadstool on national television. Mastriano is a former state senator that was all in on Trump's conspiracy bullshit about the 2020 election for pretty much the second the words escaped Trump's lips. He's gone on record several times saying that his state has an absolute right to replace the electors the voters chose with loyal Trumpies. Since then, he's campaigned at conferences that promote QAnon and 9-11 conspiracy theories, and he's told everyone who cares to listen that he has every intent of using his power as governor to subvert democracy should a Democrat win the presidential election in 2024. Now, the mainstream media is calling this guy an election denier or an election conspiracist, which, you know, yeah, good, call him that. But I fear that's dangerously backwards facing. 
You hear that? You might think, sure, it's scary, but it's not like he can go back in time and prevent the Biden administration. It's not like the governor has the power to change out the electoral votes three years on. And even if he did, it's not like those would swing the election. But the dangerous aspect of this guy aren't in the fucking past. He's already pledged to use his power, sorry, abuse his power as governor to ensure that the next presidential election swings to the Republicans. Sure, he might have to conjure up some claims about voter fraud or illegitimacy, but given the standard of evidence his voters have settled on in the past, it's not like that's going to be hard to do. And that's not, by the way, because his voters are stupid. It's because they don't fucking care. I mean, who gives a shit whether the justification is true if you're on a mission from God and that divine authority is exactly what Mastriano has been campaigning on. Trump is God's chosen candidate. Satan thwarted God through election fraud. And it's the job of right thinking Christians to make sure that that never happens again. It's, It's not just their job. It's their holy fucking mission. See, the root of the problem here is that Christianity is ultimately incompatible with democracy. Right. Like if God's will is X, who gives a fuck that the will of the people is Y? We're tempted to believe otherwise because Christianity and uh, secular government have coexisted for so long in the U.S., but it's always been tenuous. Our democracy was crafted by some of the least religious people of their day. It was born into a historical era famous for its embrace of secular solutions. But since then, Christianity has begrudgingly accepted a subservient role in our society. Every time it surges in popularity, it tries to chip away at the secular edifice that keeps it there. And as Trump seems all too eager to prove, their leaders don't need to embrace any of the morality that their religion ostensibly promotes. After all, if they took issue with immoral authoritarian bigots in charge, they wouldn't be worshiping Jehovah, now would they? Besides, how immoral can an act possibly be if the end result aligns with God's plans? So when Doug Mastriano promises to take back America for white, heterosexual, patriarchal Christians, his supporters don't really care how he gets there. So, yeah, sure, some of Trump's preferred candidates lost on Tuesday, and that's damn satisfying, right? It was super satisfying to see Madison Cawthorn get dumped on his ass in his primary. But Mastriano's victory... Hell, even his viability overshadows all of that, and it casts a shadow at least long enough to darken Republican politics for years to come. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the legs and breasts to my wings, Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, are you ready to lick some fingers? I actually like to wear rubber gloves when I eat wings. Oh, there you go. And licking people's fingers was my kink pre-COVID. So let's hope this catches on. Yeah, (laughs) It's all working out. I like the gloves at the end. So before we get to all the finger licking, I want to remind everybody that it's still May, which means it's still Matreon. That's the time of the year we spend laying it on thick with solicitations by urging you to sign up at patreon.com slash scathing atheist. Every year we get together for a special patron only pajama party live stream, and you can help decide what we have to do during that live stream by adding your donation to the mix. We're only a few new and upgrading patrons away from live music from Anna, a Bible trivia showdown, and for reasons that I will never understand, Heath hosting an episode of D and D minus. I am a God. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can, donate as literally as a dollar an episode and help keep our lights on. And if you're not already convinced, I should remind you that patrons don't even have to listen to a word from this week's first sponsor, My Sheets Rock. Heath, Eli, you guys up here? Oh, no, thank God you're here. Oh, finally. What, what are you guys still doing in bed? It's like 4 p.m. Uh, we literally can't get out of bed. Can't Noah. get out. Why? We're way too comfy. You're too comfy? Yes, yeah. we we made the terrible mistake of buying the regulator sheets from My Sheets Rock. What are the regulator sheets from My Sheets Rock? My Sheets Rock created the regulator sheets, which are designed specifically to keep hot sleepers cool and cold sleepers comfortable. They regulate temperature, wick moisture, stay breathable, and are so soft, you'll sleep comfortably every night. Too comfortably. That's because the sheets are made from best in class bamboo rayon, the holy grail of sheeting. This miracle material transfers body heat two times more effectively than regular sheets and reduces humidity by 50%. So you can experience your best night's sleep yet. Hey, you guys have a good point. My Sheets Rock sent us a pair of sheets to try when they became a sponsor and they quickly became my favorite sheets. But like, you, you guys really can't get out of bed. I, I just, I don't know if I believe you. Don't believe me? Their five-star customer reviews speak for themselves, Noah. Plus, they offer a 90-day risk-free trial and free shipping and returns. Check out MySheetsRock at MySheetsRock.com slash scathing and enter our code scathing for 10% off and free shipping. That's MySheetsRock.com slash scathing code scathing. All right. So so do you guys want my help or? uh... No, I mean, 
we had bathroom needs, so these sheets are getting less comfy by the second. Believe me. Uh, speak for yourself. And now, back to the headlines. In our lead story tonight, a white nationalist domestic terrorist named Fuck Your Face yeah. shot 13 people, killing 10 at a supermarket in Buffalo, New York last week. 11 of those shooting victims were black, and before carrying out the massacre, he wrote a manifesto explaining that his goal was to kill as many black people as possible. And of course, it's no surprise that he was radicalized while reading about white replacement theory on the type of websites that are often run by failing pillow salesmen and those types of places. Mm -hmm. It's another super clear example that Americans can't be trusted with guns or computers or sentience. We just can't be trusted with anything. Yeah. So the obvious lesson is about our toxic racist culture and our toxic gun culture, which often intersect tragically. But there's another angle to the story that makes it fit the show we do here. And you won't hear this part in the headlines about it, but Fuck Your Face is a radical Christian terrorist. Yep, he sure is. And he's quite certain that white replacement is happening because the non-white community of the world is teaming up with the Jewish community. There yeah, it is. there it mm-hmm. is. Yeah, I guess the, the silver lining on replacement theory in that there is one at all is that these assholes clearly at least recognize how thoroughly replaceable they are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Just once, I'd love for our job to lack some intersectionality with the tragedy du jour. But yeah, today is not that day, no. everybody. That'd be great. I, uh... I would love that. Yes. Nope, not today. So just imagine a quick hypothetical. If instead of a Christian, this guy, fuck your face, was... Say a Muslim. Every single news article mentions his religion in the fucking headline. Of course they do. But I found exactly zero mentions of his Christianity, despite 29 pages of that manifesto being dedicated to the idea that, in his words, the Jews are behind the white replacement conspiracy. He argued that there's a genetic basis for higher rates of violent crime among non-white people. This, Just to be clear, that was during his manifesto about the violent crime he was about to commit as well. <laughs> and he also argued that there's a genetic basis for the racial iq gap because of course he did i mean there is in that it reflects white people's racism but i don't think that's what <laughs> yeah, he means right. good point yeah well we'll have to hear him out when sam harris has him on his podcast guys let's yeah, let's, no, let's just ask him some questions that's a good point get him. let's hear him out and from there fuck your face concluded that all the black university professors talking about critical race theory in class needed the help of, again, probably his words, sneaky Jewish smart brains to run the conspiracy. Also, Jewish people do pedophilia all the time. He added that. Also, Jewish people are secretly running transgender summer camps for, quote, Scandinavian style whites. Style? I okay. I don't understand. And also, not clear on how that replaces white people, but that's in there too. Secret Norse camps for trans people, but uh, only in the summer. Well, it's too cold most of the time there. Yeah. Okay. Right, run by Jews. Sorry, what color do assholes think Jews are? Right? Do they think that <laughs> Jews are just like Pantone enthusiasts <laughs> looking to mix things up a bit? And uh, just in case the religion angle wasn't clear enough, the manifesto specifically mentions that a personal hero and role model for fuck your face is the radical Christian terrorist who massacred 51 people at a mosque in Christchurch, New Zealand. But of course, you know, the church is going to say no true shotsman, you know, fuck your face isn't really a Christian, so religion isn't responsible. But regardless of his true level of faith, whatever that means, nothing he heard in church about morality was able to stop him from carrying out a fucking hate crime massacre. And the same goes for almost every single hate crime ever. At best, church is not helping. And let's be honest, it's not at best. We're not at best. Well, it's it's like Jesus said, Heath, by someone else's theoretical fruits, you shall know them. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And in Expelliarmus news, you know, with so many people these days giving absolutely zero fucks about COVID, it can be hard to remember that there was a brief but glorious couple of weeks where we really were most of us all on the same page. We stayed inside, we played Jackbox games, we made sourdough bread, and and then we were surprised to find out that a bread with sour in the name tasted like ass. That was almost all of us. Delicious. But from the very beginning, 
There were dicks. Dicks like Pastor Tony Spell, a COVID-denying trendsetter, if you will, who made national headlines back at the beginning of the pandemic by defying COVID regulations, killing several members of his church, trying to back buses over people, and, of course, asking people to give him their stimulus checks. That is, until he then right overwhelmed the hashtag with gay porn. Well done, Heath. Thank you. Well, this week, sadly, the Louisiana Supreme Court dropped literally all charges against Tony Spell because not spreading the plague at the most important point of not spreading COVID in human history violated his religious freedom. Yep. More important than your freedom to breathe. If sincerely held breathing conflicts with your thing, we we win. Yeah. That's in, what's happening? You'd think. You would think. Yeah. So... For those of you like me who have blocked COVID from your memory, like a car crash or Space Jam 2, <laughs> in March of 2020, Louisiana Governor John Edwards issued Order 30, which banned gatherings of 50 or more people for about a month. Figure you could bump that to Order 50 just to like make it. That's fine. <laughs> it, but it didn't apply to places like airports or grocery stores because people need those things and they're real. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then a week later, he issued Order 33, which closed non-essential businesses and banned gatherings larger than 10 people. It also imposed a stay-at-home mandate for everyone except people who were, quote, performing an essential activity, end quote, which, again, very obviously doesn't include churches. Right. I mean, you could argue that they don't perform an activity at all, essential or otherwise. Yeah. Uh, technically, we're plaguing. That's an active Jaren <laughs> activity. <laughs> Okay, did I make it worse, though? I, I often make it worse when I talk. Did I, I make yeah, it worse? They sure do. Anyways, as the owners of Noah's book, Outbreak, A Crisis of Faith, How Religion Ruined Our Global Pandemic, know, a ton of fucking churches paid no attention to that. Instead, they claimed persecution, spread the plague, and now people who don't deserve COVID, like Michael Marshall, friend of the show, who's gotten it fucking twice now, by the way, have COVID. And Spell was among the worst and most public offenders, violating several stay-at-home orders, having to be put under house arrest at one point, and he was eventually charged with six criminal counts. Now, he moved to have those charges dismissed, but a judge said no in early 2021. Then another three-judge panel said still no mm -hmm. later that year. But as I said, this week, the Louisiana Supreme Court, taking their cues from the country's Supreme Court, ruled that, quote, Orders 30 and 33 violated Tony Spell's fundamental right to exercise religion by exempting comparable secular activities from the mandated restrictions, end quote. Well, I mean, I, I can compare anything to anything, I guess. So they've got us there. <laughs> okay, But what the fuck is a comparable secular activity to praying at church? What does that even mean? Wishing wells? <laughs> I'm pretty sure those would have been shut down if they had them. Yeah. So I guess for the next plague, and thanks to the pro-plague spreading platform that half of this country has signed up for, there definitely will be a next plague. Let's keep in mind to close the grocery stores, too, lest we violate Tony Spell's right to make it all significantly worse. Yeah, that's the lesson. Yeah. <gasps> and in Haven Forbid news tonight. I made the mistake of including a tiny little shred of good news in last week's show. So, of course, that got smacked the fuck down this week. Sure did. As you'll recall, we covered a story last week about a tiny town in Kansas called Haven, where the city council voted to rein in the Christian zealot police chief. He'd taken to using the police department's Facebook page to post shit about how much better his religion was than all the other ones. And then he joined in the Christian nationalist trend of slapping in God We Trust stickers on local police cars. Well, they told him to stop doing that. He agreed. We did a story on it. And then the entire town freaked the fuck out about the dangers of people not knowing which deity their police department trusted in. So they bullied the city council into reversing its decision. Oh, thank God we brought back those stickers. I was trusting in Entropy of the Indifferent Universe last week. It was pandemonium. I don't know what happened. <laughs> right. Yeah. Y'all hear that joyful tune and No Illusions voice on his podcast? This will not stand. Right. Yeah. Um, now, of course, Haven's mayor, Adam Wright, preemptively disagreed with my characterization of this as bullying and instead said they were just listening to their constituents. He said that his office had received over a 100 emails on the subject and only two were in support of the move. And what's more, those two weren't even from around here. 
And what good are minority protections if the majority can't vote them out of existence, really? So right? <laughs> after an unusually contentious city council meeting, three of the five members agreed to reverse their decision and allow the offending decals to be replaced. Uh, hi. Yeah, we're a very important political delegation. We demand to be taken seriously. So um, give us back our stickers. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? That happened. Yeah. yeah. So just to be clear, three out of five city council members were like, well, OK, now that a bunch of slack jawed ghouls showed up to yammer into a dusty microphone that the fucking high school uses for pep rallies, I guess laws don't matter in this country anymore. We're a local government body. Clack, clack. Yep. Yeah. Well, so now as disappointing as all that sounds, there is an interesting twist to the story because apparently the city council of Haven, Kansas is way more progressive than I'd have thought leading into this. Apparently, the three members that switched their vote only did so on the condition that other religions and non-theistic beliefs could also use the free advertising space afforded by the city's police cars. So needless to say, within 48 hours, we received notice that both the Satanic Temple and American Atheists would be submitting additional decals. So... Basically, the police department will have the choice to go with a full-blown coexist sticker NASCAR aesthetic or turn the clock back and enforce the First <laughs> Amendment. Or, and let's be honest about the outcome, ignoring their own stipulation and continuing to advance the goals of Christian nationalism. Yeah. And also, look, I don't want to criticize American atheists. They do great work, but... Their sticker suggestion was e pluribus unum. I mean, come on, seriously, American, <laughs> call <laughs> us for angering Christian suggestions next time, okay? You're making us look like a bunch of nerds. Well, the, the Satanic Temple is taking care of your end of it, Eli, and they're 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 being the reasonable ones. You're making us look it's fine. All right, all right. Well, so I'll tell you what. While we workshop a few ideas for them, we'll pause for a word from our second sponsor this week, Hello Fresh. We did your trivia night. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Do you work here? Um, I mean, I'm I'm wearing a shirt with the name of the grocery store on it. Yeah, so. no, I know it's just it's the only polite way to get somebody's attention when they're very obviously mm -hmm. working at the grocery store. Uh, so my question is, do you have Spargle Blue? I'm sorry, what? I, it was my coworker's turn to write the shopping list this week, and most of it's just illegible gibberish. See, yikes! Is that a picture of a milk carton? I, I thought it was an H that got away from him. Wow. Okay, well, you might want to consider skipping trips to the grocery store with HelloFresh. What's HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. A meal delivery kit? Aren't those services kind of samey? Not at all. HelloFresh's chefs really know how to diversify your dinner menu with seasonal spring recipes like sweet heat shrimp tempura bowls, garden spinach ricotta ravioli, and one pot creamy lemon dill chicken soup. Mm, that does sound good, but but I kind of want to pick my own meals. You can. Pick your favorites from 50 different weekly options and skip weeks when you need to, change your delivery date, or update your preferences all in the HelloFresh app. It's true. HelloFresh sent us a box to try when they became a sponsor, and the meals were delicious and easy to make. That's why even after the free food, I'm still a HelloFresh subscriber. Eli, what are you doing here? I like to slap the meats. It's true. He does. He does that. So go to HelloFresh.com slash scathing16 and use the code scathing16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. So I go to HelloFresh.com slash scathing16 and use code scathing16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts? That's right. All right. So I, by the way, Eli, while you're here, what is Spargle Blue? Right. Great here? question. Oh, no, that's a tofu. Tofu. So this is a tea? Yeah, that's a tea. Okay. Please keep them away from the meats. And we're back. Next up in headlines, we have a story about one million moms. That's a group, if you're not familiar, of literally dozens of Christian moms <laughs> who spend most of their time <laughs> complaining about the gender identity of anthropomorphic potatoes and also Shakira being a demon. That's mostly what they do. Well, they found something almost that important last week. Group leader Monica Cole realized that the draft opinion from the Supreme Court that would reverse Roe v. Wade isn't quite locked in yet. So between now and the official ruling, she's calling on American Christians to fight in the spiritual battle to force people to give birth. And how do you win a spiritual battle? You give up sweet tea and Netflix for a month 
Oh, really? A hmm. month, a whole month. So in my head, this is because Monica Cole knows that Netflix and chill means something dirty, but she doesn't know what. <laughs> I'm, to, to be honest, I'm kind of mad that you have to break that illusion for me. I see it, yeah. The year is 2034. Monica Cole sits in an empty house, starving to death in the name of a Twitter account that has less followers than Carl the Pega Pegacorns. Nature is healing. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the battle plan from Monica Cole. She wrote a mass email to the four thousandths of a million moms that follow the organization on Twitter that said, quote, the fight to end abortion in America is a spiritual battle. We're asking each of you to join us in making some sacrifice for the reversal of Roe v. Wade this year. Perhaps pause your digital TV subscription for a month or give up some pleasant food, ice cream, sweet tea, candy, etc. <laughs> so she she tried to name three foods and got it wrong on two. I love that. Well, and she didn't save it on three. The, the third one is a category that <laughs> that kind of contains the first one. It's a, <laughs> it's a sweet amazing. tea. It's a drink. Hats. <laughs> you can eat hats. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Continuing the quote. This is just like Daniel the prophet did as he prayed to God. Is it? Daniel 10.3. No, it's not. We'll circle back to that. <laughs> During World War II. People were forced to go without sugar, coffee, and meat. Yeah, that was a real problem with World War II. That was, that was a really hard thing in World War II. That was four years, she said. It was six. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> this is for one month. Just pick one thing and sacrificially offer it up in prayer for God to bring about the reversal of Roe v. Wade. End quote. <laughs> the, the Eli of their group chooses a fetus. <laughs> the Eli of this group chooses a fetus. Do you guys want some? It, Snack. What did we say about eating on the air? Yeah, but he's talked about snacks. I feel it's like kinda it's kind of his fault, but that's... Thank still. you. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, that's on me. So, quick thing about the Bible quote. Wanted to circle back to that. Daniel 10.3 says, I ate no choice food, no meat or wine touched my lips, and I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. So, Monica Cole clearly read that, and she was like, yeah, we're not giving up skincare and like masturbation. I'll, I'll, mention, <laughs> I'll mention the food thing, I guess. I need I'll my just fucking use the, lotion. The foods. I like lotion a lot. I'll mention the foods. Hopefully I can name three foods on the fly while I'm typing an email. <laughs> and no, she could not. No. But more importantly, just to be clear about the Christian narrative here, they think God controls the results of Supreme Court rulings. So in their head, God's been pro-choice for the last 49 years, Clearly. but he's thinking yeah. about switching back. He's not sure yet. Mm -hmm. But if you give up ice cream or sweet tea or candy, the category, not all three of those things, you pick just one uh, for a month or, you know, if you don't, if you don't watch season four of Stranger Things for a few weeks after it comes out, if you do one of those things, God is going to get rid of the right to kill babies in America, a right that he granted 49 years ago that helped legally kill in their head about 63 million babies over that time. But he's going to let that keep happening in some states and also a bunch of countries all around the world. That's their opinion about reality and God. Mm -hmm. And these people are allowed to drive and vote. What yeah. the fuck? All right, so not for nothing, though. If I have to wait any longer to see the next season of Stranger Things, I'm going to kill so many babies. Right. So many. No, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. You got to stop emailing that to Netflix, man. Okay, but it got the fucking season released, didn't it? it, it it's yeah, no, out there, it's yeah, coming it's, out. Results. It's a win. <laughs> and in School of Bard Cox news, in a segment so reoccurring that I might just have to have my wife write a jingle for it, parents were once again shocked this week to learn that the Christian school they sent their kids to in the middle of Louisiana was not the bastion of progressivism and understanding that they believed it to be. After an assignment went viral this week, which asked students to write a letter to a hypothetical gay friend telling them not to be gay. But, you know, b biblically. Jesus. Uh, okay. Uh, dear gay Steve. Dear? To, mm, that feels... Okay. To whom the, the penis may concern... No, that... Okay, that feels weird. <laughs> MLA manual say for bigot letters, teacher. <laughs> P.S. Enclosed as a stone, please throw it at yourself at your earliest <laughs> convenience. Yeah. yeah. So here's the assignment, according to the website. Quote, 
write a letter to a friend of your same gender who is struggling with homosexuality. Struggling. Okay, but, yeah. but like if, if gay sex is easy for that person, you, you just let it go. You got to pick your battles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Assume that you have known this friend since kindergarten, that you go to the same church, that you have been pretty good friends over the years until now. This friend is your same age. The aim of your letter should be to lovingly and compassionately speak truth to the person you're talking to in a way that does not approve of any sin. Instead, try to persuade them of the goodness of God's design for them. God hates spending time with you. <laughs> the assignment concludes in at least eight sentences. Try to show the friend from the Bible reason and your personal friendship that God's design for them is good, that homosexuality will not bring them satisfaction and that you love them, even though you don't approve of their lifestyle End quote. Hey, uh, gay Steve, uh, as per my last email. No. Okay. That's aggressive. I feel like that's, <laughs> that's aggressive every time you use that. Okay. Gay Steve, just bumping this to the top of your inbox. Uh, <laughs> you're going to be tortured in like a fire for eternity. Also, I, I love you. <laughs> Five more sentences, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but you're there. You're almost there, bud. And it actually does get worse. Don't worry. Lest you think this assignment was just like some Christian bat shittery that no one was paying attention to or like, you know, was part of the school book, but nobody was using it. No, no, no. The superintendent of the school doubled down, clarifying that the assignment was in line with the school's values of bigotry. So, yeah. Just a quick reminder, we here at The Scathing Atheist, we, we are aware that public schools suck. And public schools in Louisiana are probably somehow worse than that. But at least in public schools, there are laws against this shit that people are supposed to be following. So, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, in Florida, it would be illegal to even bring this subject up. Yes. <laughs> Fuck. That's true, though. And finally tonight, in Caps Lock News. Americans United for the Separation of Church and State sent a formal request to the IRS asking them to investigate Greg Locke's Tennessee church for Johnson Amendment violations after Locke told his congregants that they can't vote Democrat and be Christian. Now, granted, asking the IRS to revoke a tax exemption for a church just because it blatantly and publicly broke the law is about as likely to succeed as prayer. But I still applaud <laughs> Americans United for underscoring that hypocrisy with this request. And honestly, any effort to draw attention to Greg Locke's dangerous lunacy is probably worth that effort. Yeah, it's just Andrew Seidel rolling a giant boulder up a hill to the IRS building. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, hey, broke the law again. Do your fucking job, please. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I head back down. I'll, I'll, I'll see you. See you tomorrow. Okay. To be fair, that boulder-based exercise program is working for Andrew Seidel. He is looking delish these days, can <laughs> I say. Agree. So, yeah. So, to be clear... Fuck the shit out of Andrew. It's illegal Agreed. for a tax exempt organization to endorse a candidate or tell people how to vote or how not to vote. The provision of the tax code that spells this out is called the Johnson Amendment, named after Lyndon Johnson, rather than what a prick you'd have to be to violate it. And this is a rule that tax exempt <laughs> organizations take super, super seriously unless they are churches. In fact, in a coordinated fuck you to the IRS called Pulpit Freedom Sunday, more than 2,000 churches have sent the IRS video of them breaking this rule, along with a dare for them to do something about it. So far, one of those 2,000 plus churches has been investigated and zero of them have lost their tax exemption. Ah, uh, yes. Just one of the many reminders that the bad guys aren't playing by the rules and you probably shouldn't be either. Yeah, but they arrest us when we, when we they violate sure those sure do. We're a church now. So, yeah, given the history of inaction, Locke probably wasn't super worried about the Johnson Amendment when he told his congregants, quote, if you vote Democrat, well, let me do the voice. If you vote Democrat, I don't even want you around this church. You can get out. You can get out, you demon. You can get out, you baby butchering election thief. You cannot be a Christian and vote Democrat in this nation. They hate this nation. You cannot be a Democrat and a Christian. You cannot. And then. Realizing that his IRS violation didn't even have a threat of violence in it, he added, quote, everyone want to talk about the insurrection. Mm, let me tell you something. You ain't seen the insurrection yet. You keep pushing our buttons, you low down, sorry, compromisers, you God hating communists. Maybe you'll find out what an insurrection is, end quote. So uh, vote for Joe McCarthy, who who loves the smooth flavor of Paul Mall cigarette. Fuck, I, <laughs> I slip into the 50s radio voice again. Yeah, yeah. Greg Locke's like, I am actively calling for violent revolution against elected officials. 
Also, see Eli's earlier comment about rule That's following. We get arrested for that. Eli. <laughs> so, yeah, doubtful anything will come of American United's request. But I think it's worth reflecting on how easy it would have been to get some federal department or another to investigate a mosque whose leader started talking about how we ain't seen an insurrection yet. Mm-hmm. And they blew it up. Yeah. Well, and by the way, while we're on the subject, yes, the fuck we have, Greg. <laughs> we saw the best you've got. You were there. Y'all staged a murderous coup to try to overthrow the elected government. You failed because you fucking idiots thought it was a game of capture the flag and that somehow occupying the physical space where governing happens meant you won. This is the magic circle, I think. I'm yeah. doing something. <laughs> right. Now fuck off and go freebase a frappuccino, you incompetent <laughs> jackass. <laughs> and with Greg Locke thus informed, I suppose we can close the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Jumaji. And when we come back, we're going to kind of regret it. Hey, podcast listener. I'm Eli Bosnick. And I'm Heath Enright. And we just wanted to say, go fuck yourself. Uh, guys, guys, not a great idea to tell our audience to fuck themselves during Matreon. Or, or any time, really. No, Noah, this isn't for Matreon. It's for our third sponsor this week, AdamandEve.com. The best way to go fuck yourself. That's right. And Adam and Eve is offering 50% off just about any item. But that's not all. When you get one item, they'll also send three bonus sexy items and six free movies. More than that, Adam and Eve wants to make your life easy. They offer discreet shipping as your privacy is a priority, plus free shipping on the entire order. Doesn't matter how much you spend or what you buy. It'll be packaged and sent discreetly for free. That's 50% off one item and 10 free gifts to boot. Just go to adamandeve.com and select any one item to fuck yourself with. Just enter offer code SCATHING at checkout and you'll get 50% off almost any one item plus 10 free gifts, three bonus items, six free movies, and free shipping. That's SCATHING, S-C-A-T-H-I-N-G at adamandeve.com. This is an exclusive offer specific to this podcast, so be sure to use the code SCATHING to get not just the discount and the free goodies, but also 100% Free shipping. Code scathing. All right, fellas. Well, glad to hear you weren't insulting the audience. Mm, nah, not unless they're too chicken to fuck themselves. We're not. Yeah, you big chickens. Okay, okay. I've heard a lot of people over the last couple of weeks talking about how NFTs might represent the dumbest possible investment. And though I'm loath to come to their defense, we were introduced to something with a budget that would have been way better invested in monkey JPEGs on this week's God Awful Mini. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched The Prophet of Oz. It's the story of, I'm pretty sure, a Christian orthodontist making a TV commercial <laughs> for his business based on The Wizard of Oz. And it turned out way better than most Christian movies. So now it's a Christian movie. There you yeah. go. And Eli, how bad was this mini? Well, if you love The Wizard of Oz... You won't really care for this. Probably it's not. Aside yeah, from the, the more you like Wizard of Oz, the less this is going to do it for you. So in keeping with our sister show's format, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Best worst braces. Yes, okay. I Okay. So yeah. that's why I mentioned orthodont. There's a character, the, the angel of God or whatever, supposed to be the good witch, has very large, like, 1960s braces. Mm -hmm. It's like she's eating an apple with rubber bands the whole time. It's insane. <laughs> she's eating a rubber band ball the entire time. Yeah. I, ha I, had those, I had those braces for a little bit, but, you know, like the early 90s version, not much better. Certainly didn't have the worst teeth in the movie, though. <laughs> no. I was going to go with best worst satanic mullet. Ooh. The, the guy who plays the devil, um, Oh boy, I'll tell you that that was that was once a haircut that people wore. Hype <laughs> casting. <laughs> and again, I'm gonna go with a physical resemblance as well. I'm gonna go with best worst lion costume. We'll get to it when we get to it. And I prefer if we don't get to it. It, it was, was <laughs> it will remain in my troubling. nightmares forever. <laughs> yeah, so okay. So to give you an idea how stupid this is gonna be, the first words we see are prodigal films. Now 
I guess they know that word from the prodigal son, but like that word means wastefully extravagant. (laughs) I don't think that's what they're going for. But anyway, so then we get the title, The Prophet of Oz. Okay, so they just switched out wizard for prophet. So they were like, seriously, a wizard? Okay, that's that's silly. But prophets are real. (laughs) We're going to do a prophet. Well, so that's so much of this, right? Because they can't like Wizard of Oz because it's got wizards and witches and that's satanic. So they're trying to replace that. <laughs> At this point, I was like, okay, so the prophet actually does do magic and like self-reliance is dumb. End of story. Like, where do you go from there? There you go. Mm, yeah. I mean, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> right. That Yeah, you go to this movie from there. Yep. So we open up on, on little Dorothy. She's feeding her guinea pig. Ugh. Guinea pigs are the fucking best. Fuck you oh, and your notes what? here, Eli. Fuck your notes. Oh, Eli. this is the fight. I've never been willing to stand on a hill on the opposite side of a battle of no illusions. I will go. You're, this is wait. the, I'll divide our audiences in half. You're anti guinea No, you have, everyone loves guinea pigs. A pug is the guinea pig of dogs. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So, guinea pigs suck. She feeds her incredibly awesome guinea pig that is the most awesome of all pets. Well, okay, but that's that's overstating it, but still, they're they're great. And then she says her her prayers. Her now I, I lay me down to sleep. I always forget that the Christian sleep prayer is basically we good. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrifying though. It's like yeah. if if you murder me while I'm sleeping because that might happen. I'm a child. Don't also torture me forever, please and thank you. Yep, that's the prayer. That's it. <laughs> So she crawls into bed. She wakes up in a dream, screaming, and and falls her way into Oz. By the way, um, I watch I watch this with Dark Side of the Moon playing just to see what would happen. <laughs> Speak to me was playing at the beginning. It doesn't line up with anything. No, no, oh, all right, that's, that's a shame. So yeah, so she's in a green screen, or I mean, a lavish garden. Oh man. I'm watching this person learn how to use a green screen and it is not going well. Well, I was say you're you're watching someone not learn how to use a green screen anyway. Like don't right. show her feet, dude. <laughs> Stop showing Yeah, and, and her guinea pig is along for the ride. This will never matter and we will not see him again until the end of the movie. It's like the guinea pig was a, a certain level of Kickstarter better. <laughs> <laughs> And just then, Heath's best worst shows up. She is an angel of God, not a fucking witch. Okay? (laughs) Good or otherwise. With the huge braces. It's weird that an angel of God would need orthodonture. Right? You would think God would take care of that. Feels like God would do that. Yeah. But she explains, I am an angel of God, and this is the land of Oz. And I just wrote, weird fucking crossover, that. Yeah. So the witch is like, are you a good Christian or a bad Christian? And Dorothy's like, I, I, do, I don't I don't know. I go to church and everything. She's like, no, it doesn't. That doesn't count. No, it's, it's magic words. She's, she needs to know, has Dorothy been born again? And Dorothy doesn't know. But just then the devil, my best word shows up, the devil. Oh, Fred Armisen from the metal band. That that was the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say we've seen a lot of devils. One of the scariest. True. Not on purpose, but definitely one of the scariest. I like that the devil tries to do like a kid's magic trick. (laughs) He's like, you want a cigarette from behind your dirty ear? And he takes (laughs) a cigarette out. And she's like, no. Why would I? I don't want that. (laughs) And he's like, do you want this unlabeled beer that I clearly made in my garage very badly? (laughs) She's like, no, no. Well, it's it's actually better than that because he holds his hands out at, you know, beer-ish height and then a clip art beer appears in between his hands and she's like can I touch that and he's like please don't touch that you can't you come on (laughs) well and even worse the clip art beer has green on it like the reflection of the light (laughs) off the brown bottle it has enough to like trigger the green screen (laughs) so it's also got a garden in it (laughs) so but she tells the, the devil to fuck off or I'm sorry the angel tells the devil to fuck off so he has to fuck off And the devil's leaving thing is an explosion. But the explosion very obviously came with a sound effect. And whoever made this movie didn't know how to separate the two. So every time the devil (laughs) appears or disappears, it'll be, Yeah. You expect chunks of him to fly around the room, yeah. Also, that explodey cloud of smoke takes too long for them to bring into the stupid picture. So devil guy has to keep doing the mwahaha laugh for way too long. Fair, yeah, yeah, for a while. Breath. It's the best. Yeah, so, but the angel tells Dorothy she needs to go see the prophet of Oz to find out if she's born again. 
And Dorothy's like, how do I get there? And the angel's like, follow this road. And the filmmaker's like, surely I'll be able to find a road of some sort for her to be walking down. No? <laughs> nope. So, okay, so we cut to her wandering down, not a road, yellow brick or otherwise, when she comes across the scarecrow. <laughs> and she just starts roasting the scarecrow. As she walks up to him. And it's kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. So he's said, now let's keep in mind that a, a scarecrow that's alive is just crucified. Right. Right. <laughs> so she's walking down the fucking Appian way here. And she's like, you look stupid up there. Why are you up there? It's stupid. Oh, and then he talks. He's like, you're, you're a mean kid. And she's like, wow, you're a talking scarecrow. So in her head, she was talking to an inanimate object and then yep. found out it was real. Yeah. Yeah. There's a bunch of cut footage of her being like, stupid rock. Fuck you, tree. <laughs> you look stupid. <laughs> oh, my God. OK, one answered. <laughs> There's also this fantastic community theater moment, right, where she very obviously messes up her line or he messes up his. I don't know. I didn't see the script. But she's like, are you stuck up there? And he's like, no, I'm stuck up here. Well, he says, no, I couldn't get down if I tried. And I'm like, that's yes. It's typical <laughs> Christians not knowing how no works, right? Yeah. She says you need faith to get down. Yeah. And but then she's like, well, that doesn't. Doesn't really make any sense physically. In the, uh, just step step down. Great. Please get Great. off the crucifix. Let, let's go get some faith anyway, though. We're going <laughs> to seek some faith. So, yeah. So she gives him a hand and, and, and helps him down. And, and <laughs> now we establish that he doesn't have faith. So he needs to go see the prophet of Oz to, to get some. Yeah. Okay. Just religion taking credit for gravity is perfect. <laughs> right? Like that's the, it's like Trump taking credit for April happening. <laughs> Really wanted Dorothy to be like, see, it didn't require faith at all. Fuck. Sorry, I disproved the movie. You want to get back up there? (laughs) Do another take. Okay, so and then they finally find a road to shoot on (laughs) where they come across the Tin Man. Now, you know, he's supposed to be all rusted up. He's doing such a bad job of holding still. (laughs) Oh, God. So Wizard of Oz and this, it's just a weird plot. This stuff occurred to me. They see a man made of metal holding an axe and they're like, let's go interact with that. That's, that's not a good idea. And then they come up to him and he's they're like, he's rusted solid. And I don't know why this never occurred to me before. Tin doesn't rust. No, it doesn't. No, it that's does not. how that metal works. Stupid. So, yeah, so they unrust him with the oil can and everything. This actor apparently can only memorize five words at a time. Yeah. Right? Everything is just with these weird halting starts and stops. The, the acting in this is impossibly bad. Yeah. Yeah, he said he was like, I was trying to pray, but I couldn't. So I walked and I tried to pray some more shit. Did, did I find a circle with my lines? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know how to pray so he can join him, too. And the prophet of Oz will teach him, apparently. Yeah. So they're walking down exactly that same part of exactly that same road at pretty much the same time of day. And I'm I'm writing in my notes at this point, like, given what we've seen so far, I cannot wait to see the lion costume. (laughs) That was the last time I'd ever going to look forward to that. Sure will. Yeah, she turns to Tin Man. She goes, do you think there are animals here? And he's like, yes. (laughs) (laughs) And just then the cowardly lion jumps out and he is terrifying. Okay. Okay. I was like, all right, Hannibal Lecter victim with a skin mask has shown yes. up. What's they happening cut here? the face off of a baby doll and hung it off his <laughs> forehead? Something like that, yeah. 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 <laughs> and then covered the rest of his body in, like, drag queen blonde wigs? <laughs> so fucking bad. Also, I have to point this out. During this exchange... There are chirping birds in the background that are loud enough to drown out all the dialogue. Yeah, they sure are. Also, because he's not the cowardly lion, we're going to learn he's a lion without compassion. He The put him up, put him up doesn't end. So we just have this drunk Irish lion throughout the whole fucking thing <laughs> who's like, I'll fucking kick your ass, yes. you pieces of <laughs> Fuck you. Okay, okay. But just why do you have a skin mask, man? Like we can right, fight yeah. if you want. Why do you have that? So that's what happened to the last guy. <laughs> he says, do you know what it's like to go through life without compassion? And I'm like, well, I could just ask Heath if I really wanted. I don't know to watch the whole fucking movie. <laughs> See, I wrote in my notes, this is like when I tried talking to Twitter trolls in 2015. Oh, <laughs> now, now I feel bad. It's really easy to answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would imagine easier. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. 
but he's going to join them on their quest to see the prophet who can apparently give him compassion. And then they ha- they happen upon Silver City, not Emerald City. Apparently some lawyer or another was like, nah, man, there are there are limits, though. OK, but it's it's green, though. It yep. is green, though. Why would you say mm-hmm. a different color there? Did they think that they could get away with copyright violation if they just like, could I be like very obvious picture of Disneyland? Here it is. Wisney man. <laughs> yes. It's yep. the mustard tile road. Nailed it. Yeah. But they head up there. We we meet the guard and the guard is like, I'm not going to let you in. And they're like, well, there's no movie if you don't. And he's like, oh, right. Yes, I am going to let you in. And then we're like, what the fuck was the point of that scene? Then? <laughs> yeah, I think that was just so that we could see how few teeth that actor had. Yeah, but very few. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, more than me, I guess. So I can't really I guess I can't talk too much shit. Well, I have a more teeth than this gentleman. And I would like to say <laughs> I was upset by the non address of how many teeth he had. I thought Dor- Dorothy and the characters would be like, yeah, so we're looking for like faith, prayer, and compassion. We can add teeth if you want. Yeah, and right. We Do just you all go together the to the prophet. <laughs> so, okay, so they head inside the Silver City slash filmmaker's basement. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the very first shot when they walk in is their very obvious basement wall AC unit. It's yes. so big. <laughs> and if they had zoomed in a little, we wouldn't be able to see it, but they yeah. didn't. Mm-mm. For whatever reason, that fucking AC unit is going to sit in the fucking frame yeah. for the rest of the movie. Pay no attention to that thing that appears to be an AC <laughs> unit in my fantasy old timey castle. Now, I will say that the windows in the basement, like, I feel like this whole project began because some dude was looking at the windows in his mom's basement and said, Do these look kind of Wizard of Ozzy to you guys? Oh, castle right? <laughs> yeah, I, I have an idea here. Hear me out. But this is where they meet the the prophet of Oz who has like a green demon alien face. Yeah, it's weird to say that like this was made. I don't remember when this was made, but it was made a while after the real Wizard of Oz and they didn't quite pull off the same special effects as the Wizard of Oz did. I did like that the prophet of Oz is just kind of like angry, which makes sense because they're like, we're here for some stuff. We here's our list of stuff that we want from you. And he's like, great. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Love that. Love my job. I just, you know, grant things to (laughs) random people who show up. Is that a metal man with an axe? What? (laughs) Why would would you want to make him more mobile? Why are you hanging out? (laughs) But what's great is that because he's supposed to be the bad prophet, he just answers all of their requests with like what they think non-believers answers are. So he's like, faith is bullshit. And he literally says, Praying is a waste of time. And I wrote in my notes, honestly, if someone can screenshot the Prophet of Oz so that I can make a praying is a waste of time t-shirt, we would sell the (laughs) fuck out of those. Yeah, but just then, as he's telling them that religion is bullshit and they don't need compassion, the Scarecrow notices a book on the table. So, you know, again, trying to hit the beats of Wizard of Oz, he's like, pay no attention to the... You, the the Bible, the book there. I just so big, oh, okay. W- w- why do you have it displayed prominently on a table like that? Seems like you wouldn't. It's mostly genocide and horse cocks. You're gonna <laughs> want to not read that. <laughs> but Dorothy looks through the Bible, and damn it, if she can't find the perfect passage for every one of their problems, I would give anything if this movie was just him floating there for a while while she's like, oh, "Sorry, I I know it's in here somewhere." <laughs> <laughs> So it's like five, six minutes. Wow, this is a lot of begats in this fucking ah. thing. This is mostly... <laughs> nope, no, sorry. No. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, with a tent peg. Woof. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, she reads them from First Peter and from Romans and from Zechariah. And now everybody knows the thing that they needed to know. Yeah, and when, when she finishes, she says, well, what do you think about that? And again, alternate ending. If the wizard had just been like, fuck... You credits my favorite movie, my favorite movie in the world. I'd watch it every year on Christmas. Yes, but unfortunately for us, the prophet is fucking stumped by those awesome Bible passages. So he just disappears and the light comes on and some dude walks out of a booth and goes, you got me, I guess. Yeah. He's like, it's just an ordinary man. And I wrote in my notes. I mean, I feel like an ordinary man would have a suit jacket that fits him, but sure. Yeah, and a bow tie that wasn't tied like he was running from a chainsaw killer when he put it on. Yeah. <laughs> what is the point of this guy? He just walks out and he's like, yeah, so I never read the Bible. Um, I figured it made sense to build a 
sad castle of atheist lies. <laughs> that's that's what happened in my life. And they're like, read the Bible. And he's like, okay. He's like, yeah, you know what? I'll do that right now. And he sits down and I wrote in my notes, are we going to watch him read the Bible? <laughs> and we do for like a minute and a half. You watch the characters be like, oh, we're going to. We're going to watch you You're sit just going down and read it? Cover to cover right now, huh? There's literally an uncomfortable throat clear. There's <laughs> Literally, we watch the scarecrow go. <laughs> 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 right, the angel. Let's go find the angel. That was a character from the movie. Yeah. I wanted him to be like, ah, genocide and horse cocks. See, I told you this is a dumb book. <laughs> it's a dumb book. So, and the lion is like, hey, not for nothing, but what are we going to do with the rest of the fuck? It? There's like four more minutes of runtime here. You know, and the scarecrow's like, well, let's go outside since the lighting was so good out there and see if we could rustle up that angel again. Tin Man's like, please, I'm so hot, guys. I made it ready. <laughs> Don't you? Oh, that's why the air conditioner was right there. That Do makes we have sense. an extra child face I could wear that looks really comfortable? <laughs> so, yeah, so they, they wander aimlessly for a little bit. And this is where Dorothy explains that it must have been the Holy Spirit magically guiding her to those incredibly useless Bible passages from earlier mm -hmm. and then the devil reappears and he's like see it turns out the prophet was a load of shit all his fucking christians are all a bunch of bullshit where's your god now right and she's like he's right here where i mentioned earlier making this line of dialogue pretty useless yes right but then she says the magic word. She says, devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ, my savior. And he goes, no, because oh, he has to explode again. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. take a really long time. He has a couple, couple of breaths in We're there. just watching him sneak away in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exhausted. I'm below the frame. No, you're not. <laughs> And then the angel of God reappears and she's like, well, I hope you guys learned a lesson. And then they all compete for who gets to be the I've learned something here today person. <laughs> and the lion absolutely loses. Right. It's like, I learned that the Lord is in my heart. I learned that Lord wants your prayers from your very real heart. And then the lion's like, be nice. Yep. <laughs> I learned to live, laugh, love. Damn it. <laughs> Fuck. And then the angel of the Lord breaks the fourth wall and stares right at us. And she's just like, see, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, well, right, right. Your yeah. Lord and Savior. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get the song, the movie's one song. And it's just as well put together as the movie itself. The singer is rattling that microphone like she was singing through a fan. I assume she was fighting off an attacker with it while she was singing. <laughs> <laughs> but credit where credit's due. This is where we learned that the guinea pig's name is Snickers. And it was one back around. <laughs> that is a great name for a fucking guinea The guinea pig was the star of the show. I think we can all agree Absolutely. on that. Best actor. Regardless of how we feel about guinea pigs in general. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I need to do enough drugs to erase the part of my memory that's holding on to this video. So we're going to close things there. But we'll no doubt be back soon with yet another... God awful mini. Before we toss this one in the mail slot, I want to remind you one last time that May is our annual pledge drive that counts for both new and upgrading patrons. So if you'd like to help nudge us towards our goals and you've been meaning to donate to the show, there has never been a better time. Anyway, that's all the blast movie we've got for you tonight, but we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be able to look out for a brand new episode of our sister show, The Skeptocrat, debuting at 7 Eastern on Monday, an even newer episode of our sister show's Hot Friend God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 Eastern on Tuesday, and an even newer episode of our half sister show, Citation Nita, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, this show wouldn't take if I neglected to thank Heath Enright for keeping his Madison Cawthorn lost his primary celebration tame enough that he was still able to record today. I need to thank Eli Bosnick for putting vegan snack tasting way up on the list of Patreon goals. I need to thank the lovely and talented Lucinda Lusions, who was busy helping her dad this week, but but is no less deserving of thanks for it. I also want to thank Brett for providing this week's Farnsworth quote and for drawing attention to the batshit public school policies in Australia. Remember, listeners, just because every other country is less stupid than America doesn't mean they're not still stupid. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's most memorable mammals, Edward Sporkbender, Unicron Law, Jack T187, Torsten Peel, Drew, Miles, Tim, Jamie, Zeon's Ghost, Neon Relic, Stuart, Indie Comics Dispatch, Michael, Mary, Rose, No Good Patreon Name, Digging Up Ancient Aliens, Trapanda, Mike, Sarah, Crazy Zach, Robert, Nathan, and Mary, Curtis, Hands, and AW Book Girl, who are so lovable, God has a them-sized hole in his heart. Together, these 26 people, Terminator models, and trivial superpowers helped us make Matreon a success again this year by giving us money. 
Not everybody has the money it takes to give us money, but if you do, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingatheists, whereby you'll early access to an extended ad-free version of every episode. Or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help but your car runs on gas, you can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review, telling a friend about the show, and following at PIATPod on Twitter. The legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson handles our social media, and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote all the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com. Not at all. HelloFresh's chefs really know how to... Fuck. It's fresh and chef. It's hard to say. That's why. Okay. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.